Hey guys, my name is Alex and thank you very much for a sub by. Really appreciate your visit. And today we want to solve this very, very common and easy, by the way, you know, a problem that usually you have, you know, when you are taking a computer science course or if you are studying for a coding interview, you know, which is uh, Fibonacci, you know, how to calculate a Fibonacci sequence. That's it. So that's very, very simple. Again, we usually take four steps. You know, the first step, understand the problem. The second step, just get the job done. The third step, let's create a little bit better code design. And the last step is how Ruby can, you know, provide a good, a beautiful way to solve the problem. That's it. And uh, just before going crazily into code or to the, the Fibonacci explanation, I just want to have this kind of a quick reminder uh, that you can take this course, this course, this is not a course, this is a series, but you can take this uh, series uh, here. Uh, this is my learning environment, you know, so if you want to take these uh, courses or series, and you don't want to watch that on YouTube, the, the YouTube platform itself, you can take these uh, courses here because this is a more organized way to do things. You know, you have all of the days, and then if you are, this is free, of course, and you can, uh, when you are logged in, you have access, of course, to the video itself, which is, by the way, coming from YouTube, but you can also have this uh, blog posts and code snippets. So you can just, uh, instead of typing the code by yourself, you have a lot of code snippets here related to the video that you were watching. So this is a more organized way to do things and you have this uh, kind of roadmap of, for all of the courses that I want to create here. So yeah, that's it, just a reminder reminder and uh, let's go to the problem. To explore this problem, uh, I want to, to go to the iPad because I think that's easier to show you than just to tell you. And uh, the first thing that I want to remember, you know, just to, 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 to be on the same page when it comes to Fibonacci sequences, uh, I'm gonna get this sequence, let's say it's sequence, actually the, the first sequence, which will be the Fibonacci sequence itself. So the Fibonacci sequence uh, is actually a sequence that it starts at zero and you have one. So these are the first two numbers that you have in this Fibonacci sequence. And now the next number in the sequence is the sum, I'm going to change this color, is the sum, uh, is the sum uh, of the two previous numbers. That's it. So in this case, you have zero plus one will be one. That's it. Now you have to sum the previous two numbers, which in this case is one and one, and then you have two. That's it. And now you have to sum the previous two numbers, one plus two, three. And now you have to sum <laughs> the Again, you know, I think you got it. The previous two numbers and you have five. And then you have five with three and you have eight. Eight with five and you have 13. 13 with 13 with eight and then you have 21. That's very, very simple. And I, I think that the let me change this color again. It's terrible to change the color while you were recording this. Uh, and again, I think that the easiest way to do that is, of course, you have the previous two numbers. Let's say, for example, that you are trying to calculate this sequence. And you know that this is the number one, uh, three, and the five is the number two. And now when you go to the next number, you will change the number one and number two to be five and to be eight. A very, very, very simple problem. And uh, yeah, let's try to translate that into code, which in this case will be Ruby code. 
Here we go. As usual, we are using this Ruby Online compiler, which is great because you don't need to have a Ruby environment in your local machine. That's amazing and don't have any excuses to not take this, uh, these videos. So the first thing that I want to do is I want to create this def method. This will be a method uh, which will be called factorial. Amazing. And here you go. Now, what I want to do is I want to call this factorial of course, factorial, and here we go. Perfect. And this is the sequence, zero and one. These are the first two numbers in the sequence, and you have the sum uh, of the previous two numbers, which in this case will be one, and then the sumber, the sumber, the sumber, uh, the sum of these uh, two previous numbers, one and one will be two. Now, 1 plus 2 will be 3, now 2 plus 3 will be 5, and 8, and uh, 13, and 21, and 34, and you can go 55, and 8, 88, and you can, you can go all the way to uh, all of the numbers that you want. And what I want to do is I want to calculate, I want to get the sequence of the first, let me see, um, uh, nine numbers, which in this case should be, uh, that's the first one, two and three and four and five and six and seven and eight and nine. It should be 21. So I want to get these uh, sequence. That's the sequence that I want to get. That's it, that's very, very simple. I want to copy this. This should be my, uh, yes, this should be my answer. Perfect. The first thing that I want to do is I want to <coughs> receive this variable. It takes a variable, the count, which is the number, how many numbers I want to get in this sequence. And then the first step is that I already know that number one is zero and number two is one. Again, as I said before, this is the first uh, version of this uh, logic, so I want to just get the job done. So I'm going to create a lot of local variables and uh, this code will be probably ugly and uh, I don't care, to be honest. And now what I want to do is I want to create this, this is a sequence, and because this is a sequence, I'm going to use a while expression, a while loop. So while my count is greater than two. Yes, is greater than two because I already have one and two elements. So if I didn't have these elements, then I could say that it should be greater than zero, but I already have two numbers. So while uh, count, you will calculate, you will get this uh, expression as long as count is greater than two. And then let's close it out. And here we go. What I want to do is I want to say count minus one, because of course you have to de decrement that. And then the next step is, okay, number three, this is the number zero, and number one here, and number two. Now the number three will be the sum of the previous two numbers, which in this case will be number three, the sum of the two previous numbers. And here you go, that's very, very simple, you know? And now I want to create this sequence. I want to return the sequence. And what I can do here, I can just say that I'm going to create the sequence. And now when I calculate this uh, N3, which in this case will be this number, I can just say that the sequence will receive the number three. So that's the way that Ruby receives a number in a sequence. Amazing. Now, what happens is that because this was the number one and number two, now this is the number one and this is the number two because you have to go and you have to take a step, you know, uh, and you move forward, which in this case, this will be number one. Now the number one is number two and the number two is number three. No, like number three number three okay so terrible if i can spell it perfect number three that's it so again as i said before the number one will be number two number two number three and i'm gonna count this 
Perfect. And what I want to do is I want to return this sequence. Sounds pretty fair, you know, you are, uh, you are indicating that number one is zero, number two is one, you have the sequence, you're counting, this expression will execute as long count is greater than two, and then number three will be the sum uh, of the two, the two previous numbers, and then you have the sequence, you are putting that in the sequence, and you are changing now the next two numbers. Sounds pretty good. If I execute this code, uh, yes, here you go. So it's working and amazing. So you have the same uh, sequence that we had that we have here. If I remove one number here, let's remove one number and let's test eight. If I execute this again, and it's working, perfect. So that's it. Very, very simple. Again, as I said before, uh, this is a very common sequence. And the next video, we'll try to. I know this is not the best code ever in the world. And I'm gonna try to, to get a little bit more readable and maintainable code, a better code design. And probably in one or two videos, we'll see how Ruby can solve that. And one of actually, just thinking here out loud. Uh, actually, one way to solve this is by using recurse, recursion, you know? Uh, recursion is great to solve this type of problem. So that's it, I hope that you like it and see you in the next video.